Well, it's huge when you get your third and fourth lines chipping in, you know, uh, you know, it gives your, uh, you know, your top two, two lines, you know, a little, a uh, little slack, you know, they don't have to uh, step up every game and, uh, and you score for us and, you know, uh, Joey V has been playing, you know, outstanding hockey for us and, you know, the last few games our line's been, uh, you know, getting the pucks deep and, you know, using our forward check and, you know, uh, Cookie and I have been, uh, you know, trying to be as, as physical as we can and, you know, it, uh, it worked out for us tonight. Um, no Sid, no Gino. Uh, big boost of getting Brooksy back tonight, Jeffer, uh, but uh, we just play the right way, uh, we go north with the puck, uh, we play quick, uh, you know, we shoot the puck as much as possible, go to the net, and, uh, when you're doing the right things and uh, you know, you're playing with speed, uh, uh, you know, you're a tough team to play against. That is James Neal, who somebody said a few weeks ago in a Chip Dice blog post, would score 17 goals this season. And he will in December, maybe. Good point. Josh Yoey, Rob Rossi, we're your Trib Total Media Penguins beat reporting team. And as James Neal said about my prediction, that's brutal. You could say the same thing about the Montreal Canadiens so far this season, Josh. But let's not overlook the Penguins' performance tonight. You can make an argument this was one of their two or three best performances overall of the season. And, you know, with James Neal... It, it's really enticing to think what this guy might do when he, you know, gets one of the big two centers back, and it looks like one of the big two centers is going to be back sooner rather than later. Both Evgeny Malkin and Sidney Crosby. It, nothing's official, but it, it certainly seems like it's it's closer with both of them. What's Neil going to be like? Who would you play him with? Uh, good question, Rob. The thing about Neil, other than the one goal Malkin set up against Washington late in the third period that tied the game, he's done this on his own. It's not like people are setting the platter for the guy. He's been terrific in all three zones. He's already got seven goals. He's tied for the league lead with Toronto's Phil Kessel. Who do you play him with? I don't know, and it might not matter because I think he works with Crosby or Malkin. We don't know which one will be back first. We think both of them are coming back really soon, which is great news for Penguins fans, but um. The way this guy's going, I think we're starting to come to the realization, Rob, that last year was indeed an aberration when he came here. This guy's a good hockey player. You know, I was talking with Eddie Johnson today, the you know the longtime general manager, coach, Mr. Everything with the Penguins. He said one of the things that hurt Neil last year was he didn't get the puck quick enough. And if you go back and remember those games, he's playing a lot with Alex Kovalev, a guy who likes to keep the puck mm -hmm. on his stick. Malkin, maybe a little more in that mold. Crosby, definitely not in that mold. So that might play into Dan Bilesma's decision. Dan Bilesma also has an interesting decision potentially for Saturday night for the first time this year at least. Seven defensemen from which he can pick. Brooks Orpik returned tonight, first game of the season, nine games in for the Penguins. He had that abdominal injury that required surgery in the offseason, then he sort of re-aggravated it at the beginning of the season as he's trying to prepare for the Vancouver opener. And then got back in there tonight, 17 hard minutes, almost five minutes of penalty kill time. Didn't have any free candy, you know, didn't get the hit. But, but you know, Brooks Orpik, as you wrote about it, he, he infused the whole team with a certain type of attitude. And I don't know about you, Josh, but, you know, we, we joke. He's the conscience of the team. He just brings some, some sort of intangible that you, they, they clearly lack when he's not playing and when he's not playing like he did tonight. Yeah, Sidney Crosby's the captain of this team. He's a good captain. Of it. In many ways, Brooks Orpik is the leader of this team, and that's not a knock at anyone else. Cro or excuse me, Orpik is just that kind of character, that kind of presence. He commands respect, and many of the Penguins told me tonight that they played a more physical brand of hockey simply because number 44 was in the lineup, and I think that's a pretty significant thing, and it says a lot about Brooks. And going back to what you said, Rob, about the uh, situation with the defensemen, Penguins are going to have seven healthy guys on Saturday night. Who comes out of the lineup? Niskanen, Love Joy Engeland, they've all played pretty well. Uh, they really have. If I had to guess, I'd guess Lovejoy maybe. But, uh, boy, it's an interesting decision for Dan Bilesma. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you can't say enough about what this team has gone through, but you can't say enough about what they've done. 5-2-2 two, and two going into this game Saturday night against the New Jersey Devils, who won't have Martin Brodeur, but right. they will have Zach Parisi, who, you know, we both agree is one of the finest, if sure. most underappreciated hockey players on the planet. And they'll have Peter Sakura too. They the will. The great uh, is good, buddy. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's going to be a great game Saturday night because it's a division game. Saturday night hockey games are always fun yep. at Console Energy Center. Hopefully the crowd sticks around for the whole thing this time. And who knows who will be back. It was Brooks Orpik tonight. Uh, Saturday could be all kind of surprises. For Josh Yoey, I'm Rob Rossi. We are your Trib Total Media Penguins beat reporting team.